Let's talk about what really happens when we're doing inferential statistics. What we're really doing is applying all of that knowledge we learned about a normal distribution to the concepts of our study. So let's think about this um, distribution here. It should be familiar, it's that normal distribution. And so we call this the null distribution. And the word null is another word for nothing, right? Nothing happened. So in this big blue distribution, there are really no differences between people. We're just saying these are all normal people. And um, there's a lot of people in the middle and a few people on the ends. So maybe you could think about this as intelligence. These are all perfectly normal people. And when we look at our intelligence measure, there's some people who are very rare on the upper end and there's some people who are very rare on the lower end, but most people are here in the middle. So what we're really thinking about with inferential statistics is these probabilities, we, we now understand because we spent a lot of time working with this distribution about the probabilities of being in certain ranges. And so we are going to always assume the null distribution is the, the state of being, that everybody's always the same. Remember, it's kind of like the court of law. We assume innocent until proven guilty, or we assume everyone's the same until proven otherwise. What we're going to do in inferential statistics is we're going to define an area that to us suggests you're not the same. And so what we're gonna end up saying is, if your score of intelligence fall in these red zones, we're thinking that you're different than everyone else. So what we've then decided as a field is that we're gonna say this middle blue area here is 95% of the normal range. These people are all kind of in the same um, category of people. And then what we, because there's 100% of the distribution, that leaves 5% left over, we're going to call this group kind of the abnormal range. So if you fall in this 5% zone, we're going to say you're different. So this 5% range, this is called alpha. So that's the symbol for alpha right there. You can set alpha to whatever you really want it to be. Let's say you didn't want it to be a 5% red zone. See how it's 2.5% on this side and 2.5% on that side. You could have set it to be 4%. So it's 2% on the left and 2% on the right. Now that would make it harder on you as a researcher to find a score in that zone. But you can set your alpha to be whatever you want. However, the field says you can't go over 5%. So because this class is just trying to teach you the basics of, basics of statistics, we're going to leave it always at 5%, but I wanted you to recognize that you could make it harder on yourself. You could make it 2%, you could make it 1%, whatever you feel is the rigor of the study you want to do. So moving forward, let's say somebody got a score that's right here. Let's say this is intelligence and Bob just happened to score right here. What we are doing with inferential statistics is saying, let's look at Bob's score. Does he seem like everyone else? Now, Bob could be a perfectly normal person and he just happened to score high. Maybe he guessed C, 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 C on a multiple choice and it and that worked out for him this one time. That's not really a good uh, habit to get into if you're trying to take advice from me and taking a test. But let's just say Bob is a perfectly normal intelligence and he just happened to land up here. Is it more likely that that's the case, or is it more likely that Bob comes from a totally different distribution of smart people? So this green distribution here, we call this the alternative distribution. This is a different set of people. So what we're saying is normal people are in this blue distribution. These are all normal folks. Perhaps there exists a green distribution of super smart people. When we look at Bob's score, we're having to ask, is it more likely that Bob is a very rare normal person? See how rare that is? And it's only 2.5% of the time do people score up in this top red zone. So is it more likely that Bob is a rare normal person? Or is it more likely that Bob is a perfectly average different person, right? So if I put the distribution here, you can see it. Do you see how Bob looks more like an average green distribution person than a rare blue distribution person? So what statisticians are saying is, we're not 100% sure what's happening with Bob, but because we put these red zones as our um, cutoffs, 
we're saying that if you're in the red zone, then that usually means it's more likely that you're from a green distribution than it is from being a blue distribution because you're being so rare from that blue distribution. So our null hypothesis then is that everyone is from the blue distribution. We always start with this idea that everybody's the same until proven otherwise. Our, our alternative hypothesis is that the individual that we're looking at, or if we have a sample, then that special sample we're looking at is from a different distribution. In this case, it would be green. And so what we're doing when we're running inferential statistics is we're looking at where your score is and seeing which one is more likely. Is it more likely that you're from the blue distribution or is it more likely you're from the green distribution? So again, what I would like you to take away is that we're looking at your score and we're trying to decide, is this score more likely to have come from this distribution and you're just more rare? Or is it more likely that you're just a smack average green distribution person? That's our job. And so what we have decided to do as a field, as said, is if your score falls in that red zone, we will be comfortable saying you're from the green distribution. You're more likely to have come from the green distribution than the blue distribution.